Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this pandemic time by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, uh, today our topic is the correction of deformity by Elizaro part two. We all know that we can only correct the deformity by Elizaro. So the magical Elizaro works in everywhere. And we have our uh, learned academic expert along with the magnificent speaker with us. Today our speaker is uh, Professor Mafakharul Barisar, the present president of Assami of Bangladesh and the honored visiting professor of Kurgan. Sir, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Tanvir. Uh, dear viewers, we have two learned academic experts with us, uh, one, both of them from India. One of them is uh, the very popular professor, Harshad Sir, uh, from Ramaya Hospital, Bangalore, the immediate past president of Assam India. Sir, welcome, welcome to our show, Orthopedic Solution yes, Academy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And the another one is the very enthusiastic Dr. Shamsul Huda sir from Patna, India. I would like to request Dr. Shamsul Huda sir to join with us. Welcome, sir. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Dr. Tanvir. Good evening. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we, know, we all know that the deformity is a very complicated thing and uh, it's a very good challenge for all our patients. How we can overcome this deformity by using the magical Elizaro? Our, our professor, our honorable speaker, Professor Mapakarul Barisar, will discuss it today with us. And now I would like to request Professor Mapakarul Barisar to uh, discuss the topic correction of deformity by Elizaro. So, would you please uh, share your screen with us, Professor Mapakarul Barisar, please? Okay. Now you can see? Yes, sir. We can see you clearly and hear you loudly, sir. Okay. You can see me also, eh? Yes, sir. But why I'm not. Uh, I'm not seeing your picture. Okay. Uh, so we can see. Okay, dear screen. friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, dear friends. Especially uh, my very good friend, Professor Harshacha from Bangalore, and uh, Dr. Tanbi, and at the same time, Shamsuruda from Patna. And uh, Professor Novikov from Kurgan, he was supposed to join, but he told me that he's not getting any link. That's why it is a problem for him to join with us. So without any delay, I would like to talk on my uh, today's topic, that is the deformity correction. And in my last lecture, part one, I talked about the sum of the deformities, basic thing and everything. And if you look at this history of the management of the limb deformities that I told you in the last lecture, in the pre elizar era, the only available techniques for the correction of the deformity were using only acute correction. There was no satisfactory treatment for severe limb deformities. And uh, they have done nothing at the time and only the prostate fittings and the abrasion. Then in the early 50s, Professor Gabriel Abramovich Ilizarov popularized the principles of gradual destruction of osteogenesis. The very important is the law of tension and stress. The slow and steady traction on a living tissue gives a stress which is metabolically activated and which stimulates histoneogenesis, angiogenesis, neurogenesis, myogenesis in a nutshell all genesis this is the picture where i have worked in different places in kiev that is my institute where i did ms from that this is in tashkent uzbekistan uh, i did my phd and this is the kurgan my friend harshad was there two times and this is the orthopedic mecca orthopedic capital and this is our New Institute, National Orthopedics and Trauma, Thousand Bread Hospital in Dhaka. This is my present place. This is the biggest diabetic hospital. And this is another one is a diabetic branch of the diabetic hospital. I'm working to these places. My center, my Ilizar, and these are the, you know, I have stopped all the videos because the internet is uh, uh, disturbing. That's why you can see here, the uh, from the top five and the top six all the deformities varieties of deformities so understanding regarding the deformity correction 
before embarking any kind of deformity correction please remember is there is a deformity or is the bone is deformed and you should have to know the sources of deformity it is congenital or acquired and at the same time level of the deformity plane of the deformity magnitude of the deformity and where to do the osteotomy and what type of osteotomy you are going for correction equitably or gradually and which kind of fixation you are using since we are the elizar of surgeon we love to do all the uh, deformities correction with elizar of of course you have other options also you can you can do that and never operate on the wrong bone so deformity analysis and correction think about if you are okay i am okay that means there is no problem in your bones you are all you are in normal alignment if i am okay you are bent that means how to measure and definitely def define deformity and the intelligent games is deformity options for correction that means you come lie on my couch that i'll go for treatment for your deformities and rate of deformity correction this is my continuation second lecture that's why you should have to understand the previous one and you should have to think the previous one then this is the continuation that's why i'm going to talk on these the define structure at tricks you can see the four three pictures here concavity of the deformity which bone is affected and you should know the soft tissue problem not more than 1 mm per day tailored to a specific patient and based on post operative assessment now let us see the some cases this is this is multi apical deformities look at this girl left side 19 years old problems in whole you know right side and left side see the angles that i have drawn you can see the femur near the neck shaped angle see the near the knees and at the same time this is right side and left side so before going for correction of the any deformities you should have to think yourself and measure the angles and then see i have corrected all these deformities only with multiple k wires look at this here dear friend this is the C here with hinges, and this is the medial wedge, opening wedge correction of the deformity. And after doing the correction, you can go for lengthening. This is the tibia around the knee joint with multiple smooth olive wires, smooth wires, and olive wires. These are the gradual sequential correction. Now you can see right side. If you compare this one, look at the various knee. look at the deformity at the top and after correcting the deformity of the upper part these are the hinges and this is the left side now if you see externally you can see the alignment is almost okay so this is the before and this is after one year and unfortunately i could not show you the uh, uh, all the videos because tarveer requested me not to put most of the uh, videos that's why i have i am not showing that one look at this 14 years old girl deformed right forearm due to osteomyelitis dear friend this is very difficult look at this bowing of the whole ulna resorption dissociation of distal radial ulna joint and she is running 14 years and just to compare right side to the left side how you will correct this one there are a lot of options but whenever you elizar of your hand you can do something and you should have to think yourself you correct the deformity ulna osteotomy i have done here and gradual destruction i have done here then i have opened up a little bit denuded this one and fix this with that one now you can see the construction of the only with the wire no chance pins here and this is before and this is after and we have a very good video this with this and now this case serpentine deformities 
look at this very difficult case nine years old boy post osteomyelitis aseptic deformity what i have done what you will do see here serpentine so bad deformity only lizard of give Yeah, dear viewers, I think uh, there is some uh, network problems. Uh, so it just uh, hang up there. And we'll just wait for a few seconds uh, uh, to continue this type of program. Uh, we're facing uh, some sort of network problems uh, as because of uh, it is happening uh, uh, all over the nation. Uh, and we have uh, uh, Harshad sir with us, uh, Professor Harshad sir, and it's a great honor for us. And uh, sir, uh, I think uh, Professor Barisar is joining with us also. Let's take. Uh, sir, uh, would you please uh, say something uh, uh, regarding the uh, correction of deformity uh, by <laughs> yes, Elizaro yes. during this time? Correction of deformities by Elizaro is uh, appearing very complex. But once you understand the basics of uh, deformity correction, then one by one, everything falls into place. The jigsaw puzzle is solved very easily. If you know where to do what surgery and what result you can expect. Because with Elizaro rings, there is an advantage of correcting it very slowly by uh, distracting between the two rings so that you can correct the deformity. That is how it is and gain length also. Also, yes. yes. So okay. now you can uh, see after two years yes, follow sir. up. Huh? So can you see this? Yes, from here to here, yes, sir, here. Yes. now see very good, fantastic. Look at this. Of course, you can go for the amputation initially. You can do that. But since we have a Elizarov in our hand, and this is another one, trifocal bone transport by Elizarov technique for a large post-traumatic tibial bone defects, a single center by Elizarov experience, 46 cases. Now see this one, dear friend. This girl is from Myanmar. She came to my place. Post-infective deform, deformed right knee with the depressed medial tibial plateau. If you look at this, you'll not be able to understand what kind of deformity here. Three pictures. See, this is standing. This is sitting in 90 degree. And this is in just... Uh, in the court, a straight way. Now you see this one, this one, and this one. Before going for any deformity corrections, you should have to analyze the area of the deformity. Look at this, what I have done. This is C, tibial plateau is almost, this is the sloping. It must go like this. So this is the deformity you can see here. What I have done, look at this. This is the femur top, femur opening wedge from lateral side. And next you can see here, this is, I have done lengthening from the medial wedge, just elevation of this medial side. And this is corrected from the lateral side. So deformity was in the femur and in the upper tibia, lower femur in the upper tibia. So from this situation, from back side, this is the from the front view of the correction. This is the back view. You can see how much deformity we have corrected. So this is follow up after two years from this situation to that situation. Look at this here a little bit, but range of moment is also good. See here correction. And this is the elevation of the tibial plateau from the medial side. Now this is the case you can see dear friend. Fibrous dysplasia with shepherd crook deformity of 14 years old boy. He was treated elsewhere with the DHS. You can see here, bone quality is not good. Here is the deformity. And that was the fracture here. And angulation was like that. Then he came to my place. I have put multiple, corrected the deformity. 
and fixed it with multiple K wires. Because fibrous dysplasia, you cannot get a lot of bones, and that is not the way for getting treatment. And it is a for pathological these bones, it will convert it into normal bone. See, I have corrected the deformity. Now you can see here the massive callus formation. These are the console wires. You can put multiple console wires to increase the circulation, to increase the bone quality. Now this is, you know, from external view, look at this. Look at this. This is the second ring. And this is the distal third ring. And this is before. And this you can see from that situation, quality of bone, quality of bone. Now this is the bone. And this is the lateral view you can see. A little bit deformity, this is accepted from this situation to that situation. This is only after 11 months follow up. Now let us see another case, dear friend. This is the case. She's uh, 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 the young girl of our deputy director of deep, uh, director general of the health. And she went not only in my country, different doctors, even outside my country, even they, uh, I would like to say that went to the Bangalore, not Bangalore, in CMCH, they advised her to go for amputation. Look at this. Then came to me, look at the left side, look at the right side. Now she is my very good friend, master degree holder, already finished. She, she is my Facebook friend. See, look what I have done. You can see the super ankle lengthening, gradual correction, and then lengthening, lengthening, deformity correction, deformity correction from back to right side. You know, it stop blood reflection. Now you can see lengthening of this one, lengthening of this one, fusion of the ankle, and this is you can say the super ankle of this one. And from that situation to this situation, look at this. It was the backside, like this, and now this is like this. Bone quality is good. She is happy, and now you can see how she is walking. This is before. This is after. Oh, it's good, good. She is very happy. She is very lucky now that at least we could do something with this magical Elizar. This is the beauty of Elizar. In this case, although this is a simple, non-union stiff, left TBO is lateral bowing, five years old girl. Look at this. You can go for uh, opening, go for plating, go for nailing, whatever you like. But correcting the lengthening, and here, you know, instability here, deformity, non-union. I have corrected, I, have, I can correct everything with this Elizar, magical Elizar, during treatment. Only I have done the osteotomy here, here, and with wires, gradual correction. And then, with this, good callus formation, I have... Just a little bit fibulotomy here, done. and then after four years from this situation to this situation, healed. But since the girl is growing, there is a problem with the growth plate here. And then she came to my place again. I, I have done the relengthening, and then. Again, she came to my place. Father is working in Singapore. She look massive. In this situation, from that situation, after six years. And this is after 10 years follow up from this situation to this situation. This is the beauty of Elizar. See, look. Now, see this case. Post traumatic. Bump. This is I, I I I call this monkey mouth. See the monkey, monkey mouth. Two lips, deformity like this. Hypertrophic. Yes, you can go for osteotomize, bone grafting, 
nailing, but very simple. Only put the ilizarv. This is hypertrophic. This is only your the patient is not getting the mechanical stability. Here, osteogenic potential is too much. If you go distraction, putting on the first two rings, see, with telescopic, then I have changed the rings. See, after eight months, after eight months, and from bony bump from that side to this side, not the quality, only destruction of osteogenesis. After six years, sink into a place. This is also follow up from this side to this one. And then after six years follow up, you can see this deformity, this deformity from the back, from the front, and this is from the front. And you can see this is also published in Medcrape, American Journal, Judas Cordyceps and treatment of Shepard Krug, everything, Boeing deformities. Now case this one, controlateral Boeing. Look at this difficult thing. Again, you should have to calculate yourself before going for any deformity correction. Then look at this with wires only. From this, after eight months, from this situation to that situation. Oi, very difficult gastro 3B. He was treated elsewhere. And you see this discoloration of the skin. Skin is totally gone here, backside. And came to me with this. After two months, he came to my place. And this was the injection fixator, treated elsewhere. Again, these are the challenging gauges. And you can do a lot of things with the Lizarov. And in the OT, see here, keeping this, I have put the wires. And then this gradually, at the same time, we're doing a little bit of skin grafting also, sequential. And this is compression and distraction, lengthening. And this is five months follow up. See the back side of the calcanium. And this is sequential follow up. And this is nine months follow up, you can see from the back side. And he has a very good video. And I have stopped that one because of internet. Sometimes if you run the video, you can face problem. So this is from that side to that side, this side. So this is another case. Vehicle collusion, skin gone. See sole of the foot, dorsum of the foot, treated elsewhere. Then, then we applied Ilizarov and gradually you see wire technique, the good healing process. This is the healing process. I don't know you have any idea regarding the wishbone technique, wishbone. Sometimes we are doing that. We are wishbone technique. Transversely, we are distracting here. And as a result, we are getting a lot of new vessels and that helps that helps in healing process. So this is the clinical appearance of the patient. You can see the foot and at the same time, sole and dots about the foot. This is the interesting case, dear friends. This patient came to me with knee dislocation, treated elsewhere. Knee dislocation. After three, three months, she came to my place with ulceration here. There was a vascular injury clawing of the toes. And whenever I get this kind of cases, I know the Elizara will be wear technique. Ulcer of the foot, lateral border of the foot, you can see ulcer, clawing of the toes, and there was a foot drop due to the knee dislocation. And then what I have done, see there was ulcer also here. And by this time I'm telling you, I'm getting a lot of treating, a lot of diabetic foot diabetic food care and they can be very nicely you can treat by Elizaro technique and I've seen in my center uh, that is in Bardem and uh, BHS a lot of surgical friends they are going for amputation and uh, toe amputation or below knee amputation now 
whenever I am there, now I want to save all the libs. You can see here. Now see the lateral border. After putting the reserve, this is the wire technique. And what is happening? Now you can see here. This is totally healed lateral border. And this is cloying of the toes. And after that, I have done the TPT, <coughs> Tiberius posterior transfer. And the patient is okay now. So this is the bilateral relapsed CTB. She was treated. You can see uh, the difficulties of the toes, sole of the foot, cavus, and from the backside. She was treated elsewhere. Previously, at the age of when she was two or three, and then came to me with this deformed bone and everything. Dear friends, I can tell you, I have not done any kind of osteotomy here. See, applied. After one month follow-up, you can go for gradual correction with putting the multiple wires in the toes up to the metatarsals, you can see, and differential destruction, you can do, and you can see the sole of the foot. And she was running at that time 14 years or 15 years. Now see the situation back. And this is the front view. And at that time, when she was getting physiotherapy, I took the pictures. This is the full correction of the deformities. Stages of preoperative planning. Uh, most of the Elizar of surgeons, they know. But for, for young generations, those who are going for Elizar of surgery, they must know all these things. You must know the true effects of the deformity. That is we call CODA, Center of Rotation of Angulation. And you should calculate the amount of deformity, how much you're going to correct, and how much you're going to lengthen. You should have to know the biomechanical designing. Determination of osteotomy level is very important. And determination of osteotomy shape, selection of the deformity correction type. And uh, this is the a simple diagram. This is, I've taken it from Kurgan uh, books. Uh, hinge placement, look at the apex of the deformity. See here, this is the bisector line. Uh, the lizard surgeons the know. Gradually, you can go for amount of wedge shaped regenerated bone, how much you are getting here. Gradual destruction. And in lizard of surgery, everything must be done gradually. This is the formation of trapezoidal regenerated bone. You can see here. If you look at this calculation, C, A, A, this is the B, and you can see the white base of trapezoidal regenerate here. And at the same time, you can see a narrow base of trapezoidal bone, regenerated bone. This is the bone width, bone width, and this is the connecting bar, connecting bar. Bone distance, you can see here. And A alpha, you're giving the deformity angle. And uh, during the surgery, you should have to maintain the some stages. Osteosis of leg bones, insertion of the wires, mounting of the elizar fixator, and at the same time, placement of the hinge units for deformity correction. Sometimes you need to go for the skin, skin incision, and you should have to go for the bone. And you should have to do the osteotomy. You should have to correct the deformity. And you should have to close the skin. And after doing that, you must check your bone with X-ray. And main principles of transosseous osteosynthesis of deformity correction. Insertion of wires with the stoppers in the process of deformity correction. Hypercorrection of the external supports of the transosseous fixator during its mounting. Proper efficient, efficient management or arrangement of the fixed sector in units. This is very important. This is also a beautiful thing that you should have to know how you can gradually correct <coughs> the deformity. These are the very interesting cages. Very interesting. You can put the hinge like this and one, one uh, fixator here ring, one ring here, and this is your deformity. Go for osteotomy here, and gradually you just put the hinge at the level of the coda where you are going to osteotomy, and gradually you distract, 
you are getting a good regenerated bone here in the tibia and in the fibula and your axis is okay. So this is also another variant variant of fixed configuration. How? See the placement of the hinges. This is very important, dear friends. So if you want to correct this one length, then do the osteotomy, unlock this, unlock this, unlock this, and go for destruction. And then you can correct the your uh, your uh, 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 principles. No, sorry, periods of stages that I'm going on. This is stages. Post-operative stage manage, management, gradual correction, residual deformity, proper dressing is very important, adequate functional static weight bearing of the limb, efficient exercise therapy is very important, and controlling the regenerative bone condition. You can you should have to control, check every time, every 10 to 14 days. Periods of fixed removal are determined by the following. The mean periods of consideration, depending on the amount of deformity, limb shortening, patient age, and etiology. The presence of the excess signs of newly formed bone in the data of clinical testing, the consideration and stability. Principles of removing the transocious dream fixed head. When you are going for removing this, you should have to think this one. See, adherence to the indication for the fixed head removal, consideration, clinical signs, and those by x-rays, and in general, if you see in your X-ray, the three cortices are already united and consolidated, then you can advise your patient go for dismounting the fixator. A patient should observe the following rules for removal of the Ilizar fixator. Axial and functional loading of the limb should be gradually increased. Adequate exercise therapy should continue. And fundamental principle of Ilizar methodology is load and motion. Load plus motion is equal to healing. Regular procedures of physical therapy is very important and subsequent examination and control of the subsequent examination is very important. Now, dear friends, what are the tactical errors? Calculated errors. The wrong selection of the number and levels of the osteotomy is this very important. The false in the calculations of limb segment deformity and shortening. And at the same time, if you neglect the disease and what is the etiology of the disease, and if you neglect the age of the patient, you will face the problem. So that's why regarding technical and at the same time technical errors, these are the two important things you should keep it in mind. In the preoperative period, the wrong selection of the Elizara fixed supports and parts. While performing the surgeries, no, no, observing the rules of the wire insertion, biomechanical principles of mounting the fixed supports and units. And at the same time, when you are going for osteotomy, whether you are neglecting the soft tissues, those who are preserving your uh, during the wire insertion and fixation. And the arrows that we should keep in mind in post operative period, we can see the arrows. Unreasonable, frequently changing the fixator. This is not mandatory all the time. Non-observable of observance of deformity correction rates. The absence of timely access control of the dynamics of bone regeneration. Incorrect interpretation of the access. Sometimes it happens. Premature removal of the fixator. This is also very important. And underestimation of the importance of exercise therapy and the possibilities of early limb weight bearing with the fixator applied. Of course, every surgery has got the complications. Complications are a fact of life for the orthopedic surgeons. Whenever you're doing surgery, of course, from minor to major complications you will face in your life. And these are the inflation of the soft tissues. You'll see before going for any lizard of surgery, you must tell your patient this may happen. This may happen, and these are the normal things. So post-operative neuropathy sometimes happens. Consolidation in osteotomy site. Cutting wires out of bones sometimes happens. While loosening also. When while loosening happens, you should have to change that one, or you should have to tighten the wire. Before, when you are going for any deformity correction or lengthening in the tibia, 
you can invite equinus deformity of the foot. To prevent that, you should have to know how to prevent the equinus deformity and you should tell your patient to go for exercises all the time. And sometimes you are inviting knee contracture also, you are inviting pseudoarthritis formation and you may get subluxation, you may get transformation to the regenerate bone, you will get all these complications. So how can you can live life with Elizar frame T with the patients with different Elizar? If your construction of the Elizar frame is fine, if your wire are tightened, striving force around the rings are okay, the patient will feel very good, will not feel discomfort. Rather, the patient will feel comfort. And your if you don't meticulous follow up your frame. Every time, then where are loosens, the patient may complain and and tell you that doctor, I'm facing a lot of problems and pains. So meticulous intelligent follow up follow up is very important. Look at this. How the beautiful Russian girls doing this is called the ironic exercise. See how they are doing in the rehabilitation center and before going for any surgery in the femur you must have this kind of cot and trolley so that patient feel comfort rather discomfort and in my conclusion dear friends in cosmesis and deformity corrections excellence is achieved by correcting the correct deformity at the correct quota based on correct planning by the correct method to achieve the correct correction. This is the things before going for any deformity correction. The man who made it possible, 15th of June, they invited me yesterday for attending the Elizar of 100 years. Probably I may go, but I don't know still. Today is the 4th. 15th, three days, there is a grand reception there. And all the time I tell this carry home message. What I've shown you, my friend, these are the evidence and this is the signs. And of course, the surgical skill of the patient. For Elizar of surgery, this is the combination of mechanical stability and for biology. And this is the cost effective. And you can do that. And in my country, this Elizar is holding a very good foothold in Bangladesh. These are the books. And this is uh, the Shepsov, my mentor, my teacher, my good friend. I've learned a lot of things from this gentleman and convey my gratitude. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention, dear friends. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, nice and excellent presentation uh, regarding the correction of deformity by Elizaro. Uh, I would like to request uh, Professor Hashad, sir, to share his uh, valuable experience uh, with us regarding the uh, deformity correction by Elizaro. Uh, Professor Hashad, sir, please. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Excellent, Dr. Bari. I have seen all his patients Hi. many times when I had been to Bangladesh as well as seen all his uh, work all over the world, across the world when we meet in various meetings and platforms. It's excellent. Uh, there is no doubt about it. And he's one of the best uh, surgeons who uses the Elizaro as his magic wand on all such patients. And he has showcased it across the world. He's accepted and he has been also, uh, what you call, recognized by the Elizaro Center in Russia, Kurgan, as a visiting professor because of that. Congratulations, Dr. Bari. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. my friend. And uh, <laughs> he has shown all his cases, whatever he has done. I too have my share of all such kind of cases after working for more than 25 years, three decades plus in Elizaro surgery. Uh, things are very easy once you understand and separate two things what Elizaro had told. One is the fixator itself. You use the fixator to your advantage of all its uh, usefulness. And second is the principles of Elizarov. The basic principle of Elizarov is uh, neohistogenesis. You regenerate new tissue very gradually and slowly in the direction that you want. 
so if you have a deformity like this you you have seen bari's uh, deformities which are so grotesque he has understood where the deformities are and corrected every deformity suppose you have two level deformity like this you have to just straighten it like that it seems very easy to us but for an onlooker it looks very difficult what is this it's so difficult what to do you understand so the same deformity we correct in a different axis and angle for this and a different axis and angle for this and you cannot do it acutely in regular surgeries because if a deformity is like that and you try to correct it acutely the nerves and vessels will get stretched so much that you will get paralysis and a useless limb or you will get gangrene because of loss of blood supply hence you have to do it very gradually and only the elizaro technique and elizaro external fixator allows or for that matter you can use other fixators also nowadays allows you to stretch very slowly i am sorry it allows you to stretch the deformities very slowly at the rate of 1 mm per day or 1 degree per day to get it corrected that's why it takes sometimes months and sometimes years for such most difficult deformities and most of them what used to be amputated earlier such gross deformities with infection without any bones now we are able to regenerate the bones and tissues and grow them very well and one big advantage like he has told is for diabetic and diabetic foot wounds where you just have to put elizaro professor shefshaw was there his technique of only drilling the bones or the next step of putting the elizaro rings or the next step of putting the rings and doing a transverse osteotomy to increase blood supply that is known as angio neogenesis so increasing blood supply to the foot by increasing blood supply to the foot you are increasing the chance of wounds to heal and you prevent amputations also in rest pain and gangrenous development of thromboangitis obliterans in smokers so elizaro has got vast applications from birth to old age for all varieties and bari has probably covered everything in a very short period and excellently spoken well done dr bari thank you so much i too have very good experience and i have full respect for bari for his work thank you thank sir, you, sir. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing your knowledge with us uh, but now i would like to request uh, dr shamsul udas sir uh, to share his uh, experience uh, regarding the correction of deformity thank you dr tanvir it's always been a great privilege to learn from my mentors bari sir harsha sir they've been my teachers and i've learned from them a lot from them so my message to the youngsters that uh, you have to first understand the basics of elizaro follow the basics of elizaro first follow the biology follow the uh, the principles of deformity correction one by one and as hazar sir said go to correct all the deformities one by one understand them very carefully this seems very easy but you have to go gradually step by step follow each and exact principle precisely and following all of them we have been done a lot of uh, uh, deformity corrections at uh, patna also and it's it's really a, a great pleasure seeing a lot of uh, uh, suggestions from uh, bari sir thank you thank you very much uh, dr shamsul udas sir uh, for being with us and uh, it's a great pleasure uh, for me also uh, to have a uh, professor harsha sir and a professor bari sir in a single screen and uh, it's a, a great day for us to be also and uh, dear viewers uh, hope uh, we will see you in the uh, next friday with another topic Uh, that is the magical elizaro uh, till then i am dr mamut tanvirashaf uh, want to thank uh, renata pharmaceuticals for sponsoring us and want to thank raj tv for being with us and definitely uh, uh, for the viewers i would like to request our viewers uh, to be with us and I hope we will see you in the next friday till then have a nice day and have a safe day assalam alaikum bye bye you are watching raj tv jagorone bangladesh please subscribe our channel